And for the Lord Jesus, a wonderful round of applause. Brethren, the Lord has given us so much in our services, such wonderful gifts, but in such a wonderful way because we can see God healing people, delivering people, God operating so many wonderful things, and I invite you to expect something special from the Lord in our service. Even if you have given up already, Dr. Suarez, there's no other way for me. I've already sought God for such a long time. That's the enemy speaking. Everything is deep inside of our hearts where the Word of God should reside. If we believe in the Word of God and what it tells us, our faith is reinvigorated and through our faith, we then are able to become victorious and we do the work of God the way it's supposed to be done. I don't know who you are or what it is you're going through or what you may be needing, but I know who my God is and what he can do in your life. So then, no matter how gigantic your problem may be, God is even more gigantic than the problems that you are facing, infinitely greater and powerful. And the best is, he wants to bless you. There's a message for us in the book of Luke, chapter um, 10, 21, that is very important for us. My brothers in Luke, chapter 10, verse number 21, it reads, at that time, Jesus, full of joy through the Holy Spirit, said, Well, let's stop right here. There is a kind of happiness that gets into our heads. Another one gets into our hearts. We are happy, we begin to celebrate, but there is another kind that comes through the Holy Spirit. It is the best happiness of all. This kind of happiness makes us reveal things that we don't even have an understanding of in the mighty word of God. Understand and reveal it, and it also gives us the power. It makes us powerful to take possession of the blessings. This kind of happiness makes us behave the same way Jesus behaved. And this is what he said. Luke 10, 21. I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this is what you were pleased to do. Little children are not those, those human figures that are two, three, four, ten years old, no. He's referring to people who are new in the faith, people who are still learning about God. What you are able to understand when you begin to listen to the Word of God, regardless of who you were in the past, you never had to be a religious person to receive the revelations of the Lord because most of the time these religious people are serving their religion and not the Lord. What you need to do is pay attention to the Word of God. And when you start paying attention, God will open up your understanding. What you understand about what Jesus told us in the Bible regarding that centurion, that he said that only one word was enough for that servant to be healed, and he said, look, many prostitutes and people who acted wrongly were preceding you in the kingdom of God, sitting at the table along with Abraham and Jacob, while you are missing out on your blessings. So it's very important for us to pay attention to the word of God, regardless of who we were in the past, but who we are going to be as of now, through the holy word of God, I will be a winner. I will receive my blessings and God will give you this blessing. He revealed, he gave us all of these things. What things? The disciples that prayed for the multitudes and were healed, the demons were expelled. The work of the Lord was done completely. All you have to do is read the verses before this one and you will understand. So today we all have the capability, we have the access to the power of God so we can be victorious. And it's always this way with Jesus. The moment the revelation comes and you have faith, we give thanks to the Father. Let's take a look at this verse once again that is so fundamentally important for all of our lives. At that time, Jesus, full of joy through the Holy Spirit, said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this is what you were pleased to do. Do your best always walk in the way of the Lord in fellowship. If there's anything wrong in your life right now, ask God to make things right. And if you are not so sure if what you are doing is wrong or not, speak clearly to the Lord in a serious prayer to him. Say, Lord, if this is wrong, remove it from my life. Make me feel disgusted by this. And if it's not, then give me through your holy word the correct directions and I will know exactly what you want for my life then while you are walking the ways of God in a time like this here inside the church, and this has already happened many times to me, even before I became a preacher of the word, the service is so delightful and such a blessing that you become happy in the presence of the Holy Spirit. And when that happens, you can even say things that you didn't even know. You will prophesy, but it all comes automatically. 
It's not like you are taken by something, no, you're simply more lucid than you have ever been in your life. But you become inspired, you understand the revelation of God, and the Lord changes that situation that is agonizing to you, that is stressful to you, that is making your life miserable. At that moment you understand it, and you are able to bless others as well. It may be a moment of prayer or in a message that you will speak and that person will respond, thank you so much, thank you so much, brother, thank you so much, sister, you have helped me a lot right now, but it was the Lord who used you. So Jesus was joyful in the Holy Spirit and said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. And give the message, in other words, the revelations of God are given. When the Lord reveals something to me, reveals something to you, he gives you the blessing. You are now the carrier of the good news, of the blessing, because God revealed it to you. He revealed it to you through his own word, through the preaching or through the reading of the Bible. So the moment that he understood all of these things that the 70 disciples went out and did, they prayed, God healed those who were ill, they also expelled demons in the name of Jesus. And even Jesus said that he saw Satan falling like lightning in the sky. That is, he took so many tumbles in his kingdom. Every time that a disciple would expel one of his demons, it was always a great loss to him. Oh, wouldn't it be great if we were always full of these revelations and acting upon them? The enemy would take so many tumbles. And he needs to take these tumbles because we would take so many people off his hands we would end so much suffering. People would understand so much more about the Lord God and they would become blessed and our world would be a much better place to be in. And it is necessary because the Lord has hidden from those who are wise and those who are intelligent that have not given their lives to him. God is not against those people who like to study and understand things of the cultures of man. Quite the opposite, he is in favor of them. But he also doesn't want this person to become ignorant about God. Oh, I don't believe in God. Okay, well then how did life come to be? Oh, one day there will be an explanation. There was an explosion in space, the so-called Big Bang Theory, and everything came to be. But what an intelligence explosion, right folks? It turned life into existence, made the body become real, made all of these veins that flow through our bodies start working, made the kidney that purifies our bodies, all of that. It was a very intelligence explanation. But wasn't there another one? No, there wasn't. And if there is, then everything will be over. No, no with God, nothing is over. Our God is intelligence. He is, he is he's very powerful. He has the capability of blessing our lives, always, without ending anyone's life. When God begins to operate in someone's life, there was never a single time that we heard, oh, he was healed, the one that used crutches. But it seems like he still has a few problems. Or when he was healed, there was sequela left. The angel of God came in, made a clumsy mistake, and he accidentally struck one of his nerves. This doesn't happen with the Lord. Our God has all of the power in his hands. Side effects only occur when we use medications. With the power of God, all the effects are good and everything happens in the blink of an eye. One time I was in a city nearby, here in the state of Sao Paulo, in a theater. I was actually interpreting a pastor from America. He was preaching to us. And there was a lady who became very happy because she had a myoma. And her doctor said that it would grow until over 10 pounds. And the myoma was suddenly gone. And then the lady wasn't understanding anything. And she said that she looked like she was going to the maternity hospital. Her dress was very wide as if she were pregnant. And she said, how am I going to walk in the streets in a dress that is now too big for me? It's way too big for me. <laughs> and I remember this like it happened just last night. Another beautiful miracle about this woman who was losing her hair. A lot of it, you know, a lot. So she used to brush her hair back like a hippie. And after we prayed for her, her hair instantly went back to normal. And there are two things here. First of all, God healing her hair the exact way it was before. Her hair had a measurement that only God knew and he didn't make it any shorter or longer. Yeah, it grew back, but this one came out shorter, the other longer. No, everything grew back the same size. And the second thing that impressed me was that the way she brushed her hair to hide all of the bald spots was all twisted like a hippie, and God brushed her hair exactly the way she wore it before. <laughs> he respected the lady's personality. <laughs> and she would bend down like this, and her hair would fall off, and then she threw her hair up like this, and her fiancé just stared. I asked, is this real? It's real, it's real. Chunks of hair like this would fall, and she had many bald spots, and her hair was completely restored. Can this happen again today? Let's read it again. I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. 
those who were not reputed by many things. Yes, Father, for this is what you were pleased to do. It was his will. It was God's decision, and the enemy is not able to force you to do that. I do not accept this. No, don't be foolish. Accept it. It's a decision of the one who is intelligent, the one who knows all things. Make proof of him, and I will receive my blessing in the name of Jesus. And now let's turn to the book of Ephesians, if you will, in chapter number 2. The Apostle Paul begins speaking in verse number 11, and he says, Therefore remember that you, in another time, once Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision, made in the flesh by hands, this is a religious experience. He's talking about Judaism. With that experience, those who went through this experience would mistreat those who did not, saying they were uncircumcised. You are a filthy person. And Paul, who went through the, the, um, the, the process of circumcision, he suffered the circumcision, considered himself to be pure. But in reality, the only thing that purifies is the blood of Jesus. But this, this action today is now done in the spirit and inside the hearts of all of those who accept Jesus and are baptized. So this is what Paul is saying here in the following verse. Let's take a look together. Not at that time you were without Christ. Those who still have not understood the gospel of Jesus and have not accepted him in their lives and have not been born again in him. What is to be born again? It is the recreation of their entire spirits. We are a spirit that dwells inside a body and we have a soul, mind, and intellect. And what happens to a person when they die? The soul connects itself with the spirit and they go to an encounter with the Lord. The body in a few hours needs to be buried because it will lead to problems to those who are close to it. Without the spirit, the body rots in a very short time. What makes the body remain healthy is the life inside of it. And the moment that life is removed and the spirit is removed, the person is then officially gone. And what exactly is recreation? So when man was created, he was made in complete perfection. He was not made to live only 100, 200, 500 years, no. And he was created um, in such a manner that he understood that he had power over all things, over all spiritual matters, all evil matters, over all spiritual matters, uh, referring to God, the good matters, the angels, he would determine it and they would do the work. He would rebuke all the forces of evil and they would never attack him. And also over all microscopic life, the animals that drag themselves around the earth, when they come into contact with us may sometimes cause us harm. But then he sinned and lost all of that. His spirit was then separated from the Lord. He died. That's the word for it. So he spent all of his days living like a normal person within the limitations of what we can feel. And when we accept Jesus into our hearts, this is what happens. Our bodies remain the same. Our five senses remain the same. But deep in our spirit, the Lord enters and begins to work. God doesn't improve. God doesn't heal. He does not transform. He recreates us. He creates us again. Just like a potter who is creating a vase at his, at his shop where he works, and he molds it with his hands, and something goes wrong. So he smashes the vase, gets the clay, and starts molding it again. This is what God did. And when did this happen? The day that Jesus died. In the blink of an eye, brethren, he already did all the work. Nowadays, whenever anyone accepts Jesus into their hearts, this work is inserted directly in them and they all become new creations. Before that, he didn't have Christ in life. Let's take a look at verse number 12 again. That at that time you were without Christ. They didn't have Christ. And those who have not yet converted also don't. Being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel... In this case, he's not referring to the country of Israel, but to the people of God, those who were saved, and strangers from the covenants of promise. So when the Lord made a lot of covenants in the promises that he made in favor of mankind back then, what was strange is that there was no access to him. There was no power, and there was absolutely no way for them to enjoy everything that the Lord had promised to all of them. This is how we were having no hope and without God in the world. But, and here comes the good part, now in Christ Jesus, who we believe in, who we are 
and who we are in love with and who we are depositing our faith. You who once were far off and we had nothing have been brought near by the blood of Christ. But what does all of this mean? It all means that all those who comprehend the faith in Jesus Christ and embrace it need to know about this truth. The truth that by the blood of Christ Jesus and in Christ Jesus, because Jesus said that without him there's nothing we can do, they have gotten closer to the Lord. They are no longer distant. And what does he mean by being close? Where exactly is God? If I get out of here and fly to Japan, from Japan I fly to the US, from the US I fly to Africa, and you are close to the Lord, you are if you truly understand this. You have now complete access to extend your hand in faith, symbolically speaking, and take hold of your blessing. Those of us who have faith and believe in the Lord cannot live begging for blessings. Oh Lord, please help me. Oh Lord, please answer me. Oh Lord, I really need it. I have so many needs today. Lord, look at me. No, Lord, thank you so much. It is a positive prayer. By the blood of the Lamb, I am now closer. I am closer to you, Lord. I'm no longer far away. And I know that I do not deserve this, but Jesus has paid the price for us. He died at the cross for our sins. He has shed his blood to wash away all of our sins. By his blood, I am now saved. When the Lord looks at a person through the blood of Jesus, because the person has accepted his blood, is saved and now washed by the blood of Jesus, God does not see that person as a sinful person because all of his sins have been removed. Our Lord God sees that person as someone who is perfectly ready to be blessed by him. So, Lord, if I am now closer to you, if I am now in Christ Jesus, in the holy name of Jesus, I put all of my problems, all of my battles, all of my situations that are unfavorable, no matter in what area of my life, in your hands now. The Bible teaches us to cast on to him all of our anxieties because he has been taking care. And now at the same time that I'm casting to the Lord, I take hold of it in faith and hold on to my blessing. And God this blessing belongs to me forever. So before this moment, you were an unbalanced Christian, a Christian that could fall down on either side. And sometimes you really did fall, but not anymore. And you know that you could have gotten really close and no one could ever take you far away from him. God cannot do it, but I don't want you here. I want you over there. But why don't you want me here if I'm Christ Jesus? But God would never say anything like that. Quite the opposite. The Lord is looking at you shaking his head like this and saying, wow, you have really gotten close. I'm going to bless your life right now. My brothers, our lives then become completely transformed. Our limited time here is only for us to decide things. So there, don't hide anything. Be a person that is truly close to the Lord God. And it doesn't matter who you were in the past. What matters now is who you are in the present. You got close to God for what? to assume your position, to enjoy the prosperity of an abundant life with the Lord, to enjoy your life with health, to be a blessing, to be in peace, to be successful in your life, and to be victorious in the name of the Lord Jesus. There's no mystery here, not on one side or the other. You don't have to become a fanatical person or a person that only believes in what they see. No, I believe because the Bible tells me so. This blessing is mine. I take possession of this blessing and I will enjoy this blessing from God in the name of Jesus. He made a revelation to the little children. He has given to the little children, and he has also given to people like you and I that are not considered to be anything special. But we are the people that he has always loved. And it doesn't matter if anyone applauds us or if anyone condemns us. What matters now is that we have finally gotten close to him and we received it. He has given it to us. He has given it to me and to you. It is now our right, and we need to use it whenever we feel necessary, brethren. I talk about this in my book called How to Take Possession of Your Blessing. I spent about two years and four months praying while I had rhinitis, a cold, the flu, and so on and so forth. But every week, it would attack me. And my throat got swollen. I had a fever. I had to take all sorts of medications and everything, even shots. And it was, it, it was very severe. And I would pray, saying, Lord, how am I going to be able to do this? Where are you in my life? Why won't you heal me? You made me a promise through your holy word, and God wouldn't heal me. Then one day when I picked up this book here, I almost didn't read it. Folks, millions of people almost lost their blessings because I didn't almost read it. Because I was on vacation with my wife in the US. This was in 1984. And we visited a great amount of cities. And I went to visit a friend that was a manager at the Kenneth Hagen organization. 
And he took a box full of books and said, Suarez, catch this. He threw it and I caught it. You can publish any of these books that you want. So right then, I thanked him, but I became a little upset because I already had luggage plus a box. You know, people abroad have to carry heavy luggage. And I also had to carry a small bag with, with things for emergencies and that box full of books. I would get off the airport holding that box of books. I would get a taxi holding that box. I went to the hotel holding that box. Everywhere I went, I was going to forget that box, but God wouldn't allow me to do that. <laughs> I thought, doesn't that guy have any manners? Why didn't he just send it to me through the mail? But then I thought, why didn't I go to the mail and send it home? <laughs> but I didn't do it, and I was upset with that guy. But then... We returned here to Brazil. I left the box here and returned to America two weeks later. And then I came back. Later on, I got home, opened up the box. Well, I've never heard of this man before. I began to read it, and folks, it was the book that I needed. The moment that I read this book here, two things really caught my attention. One thing is that faith does not move mountains. We've already talked about this a lot. And the other is that everything that I determine in the name of Jesus, he will do. It was already given to us, and it changed my life. That rhinitis, that cold, that flu that I had back then disappeared. And it has been 31 years. And look, <laughs> glory to God. It's great to be free. And why did this happen? In the Bible it says that the Lord has revealed to the little children. He's already revealed it. It is yours. But God could take it away. No, he can't. For no reason at all, God will take away your blessing. Satan can get in the way. Who is Satan to get in the way of the work of the Lord? The blessing is yours. And now it's time for the real life drama segment of the program. I work in the hospital in my city as an assistant in the kitchen, you know, and the pain was growing and I was doing physical therapy. The doctor would give me medication and all that and the pain was actually getting worse and worse. They said the medication doesn't relieve pain in the bones. It only makes you relax your body, but the, the pain itself doesn't go away. She felt a lot of pain, you know, always doing repetitive movements. Because she worked for a long time, she couldn't bear to lift any weight. She couldn't lift anything. Then the doctor asked me to do a lot of exams, an ultrasound, and the results came out and showed that in these two tendons over here and here, on both sides, and they showed that all four tendons had ruptured. So it was no use to do any kind of physical therapy, medication or anything. And I had to do, I had to have a surgery. Then he came up to me and said, look, but when the tendons are ruptured, they tend to shrink. And if that is the case, your case, ma'am, because if your tendons have already shrunk, your tendons, then you might have to put some kind of prosthesis in your arms, and then you'll have to be retired for disability. Then I said, no, doctor, you'll be able to heal my problem in my tendons. And, and I will not have to do anything that you just said. Then I prayed and said, God, no, you gave me two good arms and I am going to keep them the way they are in the name of Jesus. Maria de Fatima undergoes surgical procedures in one of her arms. There was a specific time she was supposed to leave and I was there waiting and she wouldn't come out. I was very worried about her blood pressure because it was high and something worse could happen. And then after a while, the doctor came out and I talked to him. They intubated her because of her blood pressure. Then later on, the doctor came to me and said, he said, look, now that you've operated this arm, you're going to have to recover for about four months. And then after that, I will operate your other arm, okay? I went to her and said, you can't do another surgery because it was bad. They had to intubate her. Just before she got discharged, the doctor said her blood pressure went up. It went up to about 30, and that's why they had to debate. As time went on, she said that she was going to have to do the surgery. The four months of recovery that the doctor had ended, it was on a Sunday, and I was watching the face show. And then when Dr. Suarez began to pray, he said during the prayer, Hey, you, you who are about to schedule a surgery today, who already operated the tendons that were ruptured, and are about to operate the other arm, the other shoulder with the ruptured tendons. Just pray along with me and you'll be healed. And that's what happened. And then I got up, you know, and I laid down on my stomach, on the floor. Then I began to flex like this, see? 
and it simply didn't hurt at all. So then I began to cry and just thank the Lord. We see that she was really healed by God. Now I can lift my arms. There is absolutely nothing left. Jesus has healed me through Dr. Suarez's program on TV. I believe God worked a miracle. The Faith Show gave Maria Gifatima another reason to be happy. I felt strongly inside my heart watching The Faith Show to help the work of the Lord so that Dr. Suarez could speak about the true Word of God, you know, to the whole world. Let's give the Lord Jesus a round of applause. And now it's time for the Open Your Heart segment. Dr. Suarez, I believe in the existence of God, even though I don't practice any kind of religion, and I feel happy this way. However, I feel as if something is not right. Dr. Suarez, how do I figure out which way I need to go? And find the answers to so many questions that I have about this. You say that you're not happy, but you're not so sure about it, or if you are happy, but you're not. But when you have an encounter with Jesus, then you will be. And we have an encounter with Jesus when we read the Word. We have to read our Bibles, we have to go to a local church, and sometimes we encounter Him very quickly, folks. And sometimes we are so different from the Lord because of so many other things that it takes a little longer. But when you feel it, commit your way to the Lord. Have faith in Him, and He will do everything that is necessary, and you will see what happiness really is, what being complete is, what being a person that has no need of anything is. You are going to be right next to God, and every time you need something, reach your hand to Him and take possession. Now I want to pray for those who are watching at home, just as I promised, and then I will pray for you, but this is for you too. God, I am entering in prayer in need of all these people who are at home, away from their churches, and the program is now ending for them in so many countries around the world, Jesus. But we are going to continue our service here personally, but Lord, now I want to minister the blessing to all these people's lives, and I rebuke all evil in their lives. I order Satan to get everything that is his and release these people. Get out with all of your evil. Lord, extend your hand to those who are in a hospital bed right now to operate the bones that have been broken. Oh, Lord, in the name of Jesus, they are blessed now. Thank you very much, and amen. <laughs> 